I'm Jess. And I'm Ryan. And we are the The Iggy Iggy Parents. Welcome to episode four. Yeah, this is one that we have been, I don't want to say dreading, but we've been making sure that we want to be ready for it before um, before tackling it because it's a, a heavy subject. Yeah, I'd say we're pretty much knocking on wood at every moment. I just knocked on some wood there. So <laughs> this is the episode about leg breaks. If you have an Iggy... You've probably been warned about this health concern, and it might also be your number one fear. I know that it was one of the first things that we learned about from our breeder. Yes. The question was, do you plan to have insurance, and have you heard about leg breaks? So, after doing some research, I have found it's not just Italian greyhounds that can suffer from leg breaks, but it is common for this breed. Mm -hmm. And there's some... Some structural reasons, some genetic reasons why, and we'll, we will get into that. Yeah, so just as a disclaimer, we do not have any personal experience with leg breaks, but today we hope to shed some light on this very serious subject. Yeah, we are, we are also not trained veterinarians or, or have any medical training. We're just coming to you from our gathered research and experience from friends. We will have a direct story from one of our Instagram friends to shed some light on their personal experience. And also some some more information from our breeder and some research that we found online doing our, our own polls and then some articles that we found. Yeah, we also want to stress that we have insurance for Adelaide. And of course, it's going to be different per region where you live, what is offered, but... We do have health insurance for, or pet insurance for Adelaide, and we plan to have it for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. And that's just the the decision that we came to after all of our research and after we've heard so many stories. But of course, it's different for everyone, so we're not pressuring. It's going to be different case by case, but we definitely are happy with our decision. Yes. So yes, that's a good way to put it. That we're we're happy and content. I feel safe. Yeah. So what did we hear about leg breaks before getting Adelaide? Just to start off, Ryan. Well, they're they're very common. Yeah. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna say very common because it it's a higher percentage than most breeds, if not all breeds. Like they might be the most common. I, I don't know. And I I never about heard that. about it as a owner of a Jack Russell, which right. is also a small dog. We had trouble with her knees, but I'd never heard about actual legs breaking. Mm-hmm. And Tinker, your dog growing up. Yeah. The foster dog you had, you wouldn't no, have we, we worried just, about that as a yeah. Bigger... They, were, they were concerned. She actually di- didn't get accepted into the guide dogs program because oh. she was uh, a mix. Um, but I, I think it was either her knees or her hips that uh, that somehow they weren't going to be strong enough. But leg breaks was never a concern. That uh, it's it's knees and hips that I had heard about, and and not the leg breaking. So we looked into it a little bit after our breeder mentioned that leg breaks can happen and we found out it can happen at any time as an accident and can happen just from jumping off a bed or a couch it seems from what we've collected from our friends we also have noticed the cost is between four to six thousand dollars depending on your region and we've heard a lot about prevention as key so those were our things going into this episode before we researched heavily and before we got some more personal stories those were just sort of the basics that we had heard about, and we were wanting to see if it was true. Today's resources, we're using a Q&A with our breeder, personal story from Tommy the Iggy. An article from a vet in Australia that seems to have a lot of experience with Italian greyhounds, and some of our own research, asking on Instagram. Yeah, so let's start with that Q&A with Shalane. So for the purpose of this episode, we wanted to chat again with our amazing breeder, Shalane, at Lady Day Kennels, because we wanted to clarify what we had originally heard from her. And after being acquainted with many more Italian greyhounds on Instagram, we wanted to ask again what her experience has been. 
So we asked her if any of her dogs, whether her dogs or the dogs from her litters, have experienced leg breaks and what the most common reasons for them and, and how they happen. And Shalane said, of the 10 that my family owns, we've had just one leg break. Knocking on wood here. It was what I call a legit break. He jumped off the front porch railing five feet onto a cement pathway. We have never had any break because they are running too fast or just jumping off the couch or anything like that. So that answer led into our next question. Are leg breaks inevitable for Iggy's or is this something breeders can help to prevent with breeding practices? Breeding practices absolutely make a difference. We try to level out our dogs. If one is smaller and has a finer structure, we always try to use a bigger and stronger mate. We give our pregnant girls supplements to help the babies develop before they are even born. I like that, that it's it's not even just about the genetics, that, that she's very good about getting genetic tests for, for all of her dogs and making those available when she can. Um, but then also things that she can do, like giving supplements. I think that's that's very interesting. For example, when we had trouble with Adelaide's knee, we found out she had the grade one of four Luxane patella. Mm-hmm. We were able to ask Shalane, hey, what's the history of knee problems in these dogs? And she was able to show us that both of Adelaide's parents have been health tested for that and that they passed, um, that they weren't going to pass on that gene. But there is obviously a chance it's, I, I don't know too much about I know, genetics, I, I think it's that they would hope that even if she has it, that it wouldn't be severe. Right. She w- At least they didn't pass on a very detrimental problem. Right. Genetically. And then Shalane also said that she prefers to have dogs that have thick bones. So leg breaks are not inevitable. And they're, they're very common, but they're mostly common in dogs that are up to two years old. But that doesn't mean they will never break. It's just that they are more fully developed and maybe a little calmer and do less risky behaviors. Definitely. Next question, Ryan. Would you recommend pet insurance for the lifespan of the dog, or is it just for when they are young and still growing? When my pups leave, I always suggest insurance, and they go home with six weeks free so that their families have time to shop around if they hadn't already. Which we had. (laughs) We had shopped around, but it was so... Well, it, comforting it, to know it that really we had. showed us that it was something that we should look into because she believed in it so much that she makes sure that we have at least a trial period for the first six weeks when she's home. Shalane went on to say, I tell people at least until two years of age, but if they're going without before or after that age, make sure to have a good chunk of change in your bank account in a perfect world lifetime insurance. Because then as they get older, like into senior years, there could be problems associated with age. So on this podcast episode, we're definitely talking about insurance just because it's so... That's going to be a thread all the way through this. It is so connected to their vulnerability when it comes to leg breaks. But Shalane makes an amazing point here that as they get older, sure, maybe leg breaks aren't your number one concern, but there's going to be some... Other problems that could arise. Mm-hmm. They often As have everyone teeth knows, problems. Yeah, small dogs, yeah. not even just Iggy's, but small dogs in general. I know, again, with my experience with a toy poodle, Maisie, she's already had many teeth pulled. I think she had nine teeth pulled when she was around five years old, and she had another set of teeth pulled a year later. Mm-hmm. Shall we take Adelaide back in? I think maybe she's she's too wound up. She's been sleeping all afternoon because we took her out for a swim, so... <laughs> Yeah, so maybe Adelaide's can take a little break right now. Be right back. All right, we're back after putting Adelaide in in her crate to have a little time because we can't really we can't really put her or let her free out here because we're uh, we're out at my parents still in Muskoka and uh, in the great outdoors. Yeah, if you can hear the wind rustling in the background, but uh, we're just out on the deck, so we don't we want to make sure she can't jump off the deck and break a leg. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) prevention that's going to be a point that we have in a little second (laughs) so the last thing we asked Shalane is what would be her number one piece of advice to help prevent leg breaks in the Iggies I think the most important thing to do to avoid leg breaks is to baby proof your home Mm. like as if you have a child that is starting to walk a lot of other breeders will say that if they can jump on it it's an okay height to jump down also teach them how to safely descend things like stairs or whatever. So for this, we definitely have experience in the prevention 
strategy. If you listen to our first episode, you will know that that's one of our top tips is to jump proof your home. So she calls it baby proof. We call it jump proof. So we jump proofed our home by putting pillows down and watching her like a hawk. Anytime she was going to jump from something, just trying our best to coax her down softly. But we've also seen little doggy ramps. Yeah. So the ones that we have seen have been specifically kind of tailored towards Dashens. Yeah. Who have their own set of problems. I think it has to do with their their backs and their spines. And just the short length of their legs. I don't know if they can really jump that high. Right. Yeah. But the ramps could be really useful for Italian greyhounds as well. If you have a specific place that you want them to be able to get up to, say it's your bed or your couch. Yeah, especially when they're young. I think that could be a really good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we it wasn't were until very she nervous. was, I don't know, five or six months old that she could even jump up onto our couch. Yeah. So the thought of her jumping up for the very first time and then falling off, perhaps that could be a very dangerous few weeks, that period of time. And maybe investing in a dog ramp would be a good idea for you. Right. Give them a specific path to do. And then they, they don't even have to worry about jumping up. I mean, the dogs don't have to worry about jumping up to get up to you, which is the reason that they would want to jump up. Exactly. Because they love you. So much love. <laughs> so yeah, that was our advice from our breeder and our updated advice after we've had Adelaide for just over a year. It's the same tips that we would give to people. Um, but it's also nice to know that she thinks about this stuff when it comes to breeding, who she, who she chooses to breed together and yeah, the genes. That's a really interesting point that sometimes I just see lots of Italian greyhounds breaking their legs. We call it the broken Iggy Club mm-hmm. online on Instagram. And I see so many leg breaks and I wonder, is it from something normal? Is it something that they did out of the ordinary, like a huge accident? And maybe do they have a history of fragility in their bones? So we're about to tell you a story from... A very adorable Iggy from Instagram. Mm -hmm. Tommy the Iggy. We love you, Tommy. You can find Tommy at Tommy the Iggy on Instagram. But Tommy's mom was very generous and kind to give us a very detailed description of Tommy's experience with leg breaks. Because he's had two separate leg breaks. So it was both legs, right? At two different times? It It was both front legs but at different times. Yeah. So I was the one talking to Tommy's mom and we're so grateful that she was open and generous with this story. And it's hard not to listen to this story and feel the same feelings that she had. She described it so well. And I, again, I, I can't imagine how it would be, but I can, I can also definitely imagine how heartbreaking this was. So of course, if you are, looking to skip a really uh, emotional story, maybe come back to it another day. This is the moment we're going to tell this story. Here we are. All right. So what was Tommy's experience with leg breaks? So we had just mentioned that he broke both of his front legs at two separate times. And the first story, it happened five days after he came home. Oof. So if you're an Iggy parent out there, you know how delicate and adorable these dogs are especially when they first come home so definitely an emotional time with Mm -hmm. that first leg break and the second story second leg break was on christmas eve last year so tommy was about one year old i don't know which is sadder (laughs) five days after coming home or on christmas eve i know oh my gosh again it's like pulling at my heartstrings it's really it's such a difficult time yeah and okay let's get into it let's let's just do it dive in okay first story it happened for tommy for the first time in the middle of the night and tommy's parents wondered is it a fire alarm nope it's a nicky scream so i'm gonna quote tommy's mom here because she puts it so well for anyone who hasn't heard it before Watch the Mandrake repotting scene from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets on full volume and then imagine that noise 10 times louder. That is the Iggy scream. Tommy had this happen. It was the middle of the night. And what did they do? So they Googled an emergency vet in London and an animal ambulance came. 
I had never heard of that before. And maybe it's spe- there in London, England. So maybe it's a specific thing there, but I had never heard of that. Yeah, I don't know if we have any in Canada or in our area, Mm-mm. but good to know that that is something available, at that least might in be London. available in your area. Yeah, definitely something to look up. Instead of looking it up right when the emergency happens, maybe in anticipation, and we will take this as a lesson to do that as well. Mm-hmm. So Tommy had one operation and several bandage changes. So I guess when you have bandage changes, it just means another visit to the vet. Right. He had to be sedated for a few of them. And he was a nervous boy. And going through a leg break at such an early age was a traumatic experience for him. So he wouldn't let the doctor get near him to change them while he was awake. So it looks like sedation was needed for Tommy. Mm -hmm. Again, because it's emotional and a scary thing for such a young pup. In total, Tommy's family spent 5,000 pounds. That's, of course... Without insurance. Without insurance. So it took about eight weeks for Tommy to fully recover, and he bounced back quick, but you can tell that the leg is still a little wonky. And it seems like it maybe affected one of his growth plates so that he hasn't fully grown either that leg or fully... We wonder why did this happen to Tommy? So Tommy was the runt of the litter and his siblings had a history of leg breaks. There was fragility in the genes. So just as we had said before that our breeder tries to breed to avoid passing on those genes. Of course, we can't always guarantee that. And it's good to know if you have litter mates that have weak bones might want to keep extra close eye on your pup. Another factor here for Tommy was that he struggled with crate training. So the evening of his first leg break happened because he was roaming free unsupervised during the night. Tommy's parents were having trouble crate training and of course who hasn't been there? It's hard. It's a very difficult thing and they cry and it's again it's an emotional thing. Looking back now I'm sure they would have changed the habits and now knowing this kind of a thing it's good to know. Something to keep in mind. Roaming free at night, maybe not advised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not exactly the reason that we have kept her in the crate. Like we said in the first episode, that there's lots of reasons to keep them in the crate. But like we said at the beginning, it's, it's a number one fear for a lot of new Iggy parents. So advice from Tommy. For the first break, they didn't have insurance from the breeder, even though it is standard for the breeder to give four weeks in the UK. So I didn't know that. Hmm. I didn't know that it was standard for breeders to give... The insurance and maybe depending on your region it is standard or it's not but Tommy did note that the breeder did not give insurance unfortunately so if you're looking to acquire an Italian Greyhound and if you happen to be getting your Iggy from a breeder maybe that's something to think about ask them do you give insurance or maybe prepare ahead of time in case that they don't Mm -hmm. if you're thinking about getting an Iggy this is the advice from Tommy get insurance Get good insurance and get it at the earliest possible moment you can get it. That's a pretty definitive statement. And I would agree with it, honestly. And of course, it could be different for everyone. But for us, gives us peace of mind. Great advice, Tommy. Do you want to tell us about the second leg break? Yeah. Christmas Eve. Yeah, so it's a different story here for leg break number two. The next break happened on a rug on the living room floor. Tommy was playing with a cockapoo and landed badly on his front leg. Completely unavoidable, but again, completely gutting. It broke our hearts to know he was going to go through another operation and another period of bed rest and slow recovery. That being said, we were much more calm, knew exactly what we needed to do, and got on with it as quickly as possible. Even Tommy was calmer this time. The Iggy scream lasted a few seconds instead of a few minutes. Oh, a few minutes. Oh. Like the first time, like not knowing how little can happen to your dog to make them do that, (laughs) right? That you think, oh, this is only so extreme and then know that it is something so extreme, like a a leg break. I would never have thought that the Iggy scream could last for minutes. Yeah. It really, of course, minutes seems like a short amount of time, but not if you Mm -hmm. know what an Iggy scream sounds like. No, not if you're repotting mandrakes. (laughs) Exactly. The brake was in an almost identical position on the other leg, and thankfully this time our insurance was in place. Tommy was treated at the most incredible specialist referrals clinic. 
It's called Hamilton's if you're in the UK. We couldn't speak more highly of them. He had his surgery on Christmas Day, again with a plate and screws being used to secure the bone, and he came home a few days later. Oh, he, did, he was away from home for multiple days. And like, on Christmas. I know. I'm sorry. This is just, it mm, makes me sad to hear and to think about. I know. Rereading this story again, it's, we feel you, Tommy. Mm-hmm. Our heart goes out to you and to any Iggy that experiences this. Yeah. Okay. It's almost over. It's almost over. Okay. Go. Okay. Come on. We can do this. He wasn't put in a cast afterwards this time. They just placed a plaster over the scar, which we were told to take off after a few days. And I'm sure this massively sped up the recovery process. He didn't have to keep going back to the vet for bandage changes, woo, <laughs> which were stressful for him. And we were able to keep a really close eye on his recovery. He was putting weight on his leg straight away. And apart from a little bit of hair loss where the scar is, you would never know it was ever broken. The doctor did some seriously incredible reconstruction. This is the second time that Tommy broke his leg. And it seems like it was a much smoother experience. Mm -hmm. Of course, you don't want to have experience in Iggy leg breaks. But knowing that there is a smoother way to handle it is good to know ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Again, if you were saying we could do research about the pet ambulance, but also do research about who specializes in in doing leg breaks we've we've heard about specialists that deal with dental cleanings but maybe we should look into who has experience with leg breaks as well right i think it's really important as an iggy parent to find a vet near you that has a specialty for either small dogs or specifically italian greyhounds i've heard that a lot of iggy owners are concerned about operations where their pup might have to go under Mm. and the Italian greyhounds specifically are so small that they need special attention with that. They're not the same as a medium sized dog or even another small dog that they are very, again, very sensitive. This is a theme that comes up on this show a lot. Iggy's are sensitive and it's not that they're not tough and that they don't have resilience, but sometimes they need extra special care. And now Tommy is absolutely fine and runs around like nothing ever happened. He's still tiny, just like Adelaide, and he's very thin boned. So we always do our best to keep him very firmly on the ground and away from danger. But he is a dog and he loves to play. Who doesn't? Now he's 18 months. We hope he's out of the danger zone and won't have another break. But we're well aware it's a possibility. So even now, Tommy's family is concerned that he could have another leg break. And That makes total sense now, knowing that it's also in the genes for him. Mm -hmm. And he also loves to play. So, you know, accidents happen. Doggo Ramps is an American company that makes beautiful couch and bed ramps for dogs. Valuing both safety and style, their ramps are made out of furniture-grade hardwood. They're made here in North America, and they come in five color options to match your home. So whether you've got a new puppy that can't jump high enough yet for the couch or bed, or you've got a senior dog that also might need assistance getting to a couch or bed, these ramps are a helpful tool to keep your dog safe. If there's anything we've learned from researching leg breaks, it's to take as many precautions as you can to prevent it. Something like a doggo ramp might be part of your prevention plan. We've heard they're especially useful for smaller dog breeds like Dachshunds that have shorter legs, but they're also coming out with a big dog bed ramp very soon too. If you're interested in buying your own doggo ramp, use our code IGGY, I-G-G-Y, for 15% off. As affiliates, we'll receive a little commission as well. They have free shipping to the U.S. and Canada and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Find Doggo Ramps on Instagram at Doggo Ramps. D-O-G-G-O-R-A-M-P-S. Or their website, DoggoRamps.com. So while it's not a vet that we would ever have access to, we did find an article from a vet in Australia Walkerville Vet in Australia has had seven fractures of the 30 Italian greyhounds that they have treated. So they have, I think, probably more experience, more experience than you would hope any vet should have to have. Um, But it's good to know that they have that experience. Yeah. So they've written an article that we will link in the show notes that you can read the the detailed description that they have. Um, But we're going to go over some of the highlights here, some of their tips and uh, and data that they found from treating so many dogs for this problem 
Yeah, so I just want to highlight, too, with the seven fractures in 30 Italian greyhounds, it doesn't include their entire lifetime. So the percentage of how many Iggy's in their experience experience leg breaks, it is not exactly a clear answer just because it's not covering any previous history of the dog or maybe past if the dog moved away and would have had a leg break later. So that's just a little disclaimer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't include the entire lifetime of every one of those 30 dogs. But their estimated rate of fracture is 25 to 45%. So that is a... That's high. That feels really high. It is a percentage that... I feel like you can't ignore. Yeah. When you see something, if it was something Right, if in 25 a human, to 45% of humans broke their legs. I think we would treat ourselves differently. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, like we said, we would take supplements when the mother is pregnant and, you know, mm-hmm. taking precautions even more than just breeding genes out or in. It's good to know that there's things to do. Mm-hmm. So what are the tips from Walkerville Vet? I want to start off here. I love this article because I've heard so much about Iggy leg breaks, but I've not known what do you do if it happens? What in that moment, in that very scary moment that Tommy was talking about, the Iggy scream, what do you do? So they have a first aid tip. They've recommended to put the lower leg into a roughly normal position. So the lower leg, I think that's the part of the leg if you think of it, that the there's an I, elbow. I think it's straighten out the part of the leg that has been broken. Oh, okay. If it's if it's at a, a weird angle, try and straighten it back out. And then wrap it in a t-shirt until it's a thick roll. So it looks like you're providing structure and a shirt is soft. Mm-hmm. Once you've done that, sticky tape it. So you're kind of creating a little cast for your Iggy. Mm-hmm. And, and then either way, try and keep them calm. Whether yeah. that works for you or you can't get it on them, either way, keep them calm and, and really make sure that they're not walking around. Yeah, because it could uh, prevent further damage to the fracture. Even just keeping them calm, if you can't manage to straighten the leg or even touch them, just keeping them calm, keeping them quiet will help prevent them from walking around and maybe damaging or causing further injury. So it sounds like from their experience, the break that Tommy had, this lower forelimb break is the most common and the famous break that they are used to dealing with. I think that's what they were talking about with the lower leg, Hmm. not the broken bone. What do you mean? They're saying the lower forelimb. Mm -hmm. I think it's a part of a dog's leg. Yeah. I don't think it's that the leg broke and now that's the lower part. That's what you were saying. No, I know. I know. I'm I'm saying like the part that broke. And I'm saying no. I'm saying the lower forelimb is the part that breaks. Yeah. So they're saying to straighten the lower forelimb. Mm -hmm. That's what I was trying to say was like the bone that broke straighten it out and they're just saying they're just clarifying which bone it is that breaks okay i hope that comes across yeah (laughs) i don't know it's okay we're not scientists here we go yeah in this article as well they explain why it happens not just to iggies but small dogs yeah so they they have some good x-ray photos um in the article like i said that'll be linked but the general problem is that the cortex the outside part of the bone is thicker in dogs and the the interior the medullar cavity which is a fine latticework of trabecular bone is very narrow so that's the part that will be that will give the bones more structure and that coupled with the fact that they are just thinner bones is the reason that they're more prone to breaking so it's it's really an, an anatomy problem yeah the overall width of the bone is smaller mm-hmm. they explained as well that genetics have a huge part of this, that it's good to avoid lines that have had issues, which I think is ultimately from the breeder's perspective, right? If it starts with the breeder, then anyone who's breeding them for shows or for pets is going to know that there's not the weakness in the bones and there's less risk involved. The other factor as well, same thing our breeder explained, is age, that it usually happens in puppies and young adults. But if you want to restrict it, they say you shouldn't restrict exercise, but you want to make sure that you avoid jumping from high places. So again, this is we're, we're common get, theme here. Yeah, we have the, all the advice is kind of converging on these these few points of don't let them jump from high places. Get insurance to make sure that you're covered. And if you know there's fragility in the genes, in the bones, take extra care. Yeah. So the last part of our episode here, or at least on this topic, I 
want to explain our Instagram polls. If you happen to follow Iggy Adelaide, you'll know that we had a few questions on our story about leg breaks and specifically reaching out to the Broken Iggy Club. So we had an idea that we wanted to do this episode, but we wanted to figure out if there was interest and also experience with this kind of in the the broader Iggy community rather than just the specific stories. And, And we got some really interesting data back that this maybe is a a thing to worry about. So the first question I had was directed, again, towards the Broken Iggy Club. Did you break your leg doing something normal, usual, etc., or out of the ordinary? So I really wanted to know, is this something that we should be afraid of, that Adelaide might jump off the couch and it's going to happen? Or was it a freak accident or, like Shalane calls it, a legit break? And... What did you anticipate the answer would be, Ryan? I think I thought it was going to be more people doing out of the ordinary things. Right. I think so, too. That was my initial thought, because we've heard that Iggy's are fragile, but we've also heard that they can be tough. So I didn't know what to expect, but I was leaning towards a more legit break. Mm -hmm. And the results were? 56% were doing something normal, usual, etc. 44% out of the ordinary. So it isn't too different, like it's almost 50-50, but it is leaning towards more normal situations. Mm -hmm. So So you just got to be, you got to be diligent all the time. You got to be watching them. It's a good reminder. Mm -hmm. Next question. Did you need surgery? I kind of imagined everyone needed surgery, but I wanted to ask this question. I would have expected that as well. (laughs) Like maybe we shouldn't shouldn't have even asked the question, but... We've got results here. The answer is 52% said yes. 48% said no. Hmm. I'm surprised. Yeah. Next question. Did you need more than one surgery? So I've heard of Iggy's having several surgeries because maybe it didn't get set right the first time. So I wanted to know. Mm-hmm. Results were? 76% only the one surgery. 24% needed extra, uh, another surgery. That's kind of good news. Yeah. I would like to think that... Hopefully the surgery would take and you wouldn't need to go in again because as we learned from Tommy, it's very traumatic to have to go and to experience being put under so many times, Mm -hmm. especially for these small dogs. It's a delicate thing. Mm -hmm. So the next thing that we asked was whether or not it was the first time that they had broken their leg. I have heard this. So again, before looking at the results, I have heard that if you have a leg break, you're more likely to get another one. Hmm. That is something I've heard because it's the bone is already weak. On the specific bone or just because of the genetics that they're more... To my understanding, it was on the specific bone. Oh, okay. That was my understanding. But again, not a vet here. And that's just word on the street. <laughs> word on the Iggy Street. Street that I like to be on. Street where all the Iggies are. You know? <laughs> 83% said it was their first time. 17% said that it happened before. I would chalk that up to people being more careful after their dog breaks their leg. Yeah, that'd be my theory too. Yeah. I think that if it were me, I would be even more diligent. Right. No more couches. We're sleeping on, or we're sitting on cu- cushions on the floor. Right. <laughs> or we're buying five ramps for you to get up to the couch. I don't care. Yeah. Make it enticing to not jump from a high height. Right. Yeah, she she... I'm going to say she doesn't even really jump for fun. She just jumps when she wants to be near us. If we're sitting on the couch, she wants to be up with us. If we're... Um, she likes to get to eye level. Yeah. If we're uh, like cooking or, or in the kitchen, then she kind of stands up on the arm of the couch, right? She wants to be up where she can see us and see what we're doing rather than kind of around our ankles. It's true. She's so tiny. I don't. I don't think it would be that hard of a transition for her not to jump anymore. We could put some things in place that would make that pretty easy. So our last question was... The most interesting question, or the most pertinent question. Yeah, it was for all of our followers. Yeah, because hopefully... Or at least the dogs. (laughs) Hopefully most of the people that were listening haven't experienced this. That's our hope. We asked, have you broken your leg? Question for the dogs. (laughs) Yeah, asking the dogs. Yes, I have. No, I haven't. (laughs) And 27% of... I'm assuming Iggy parents, responded that they have. 
So that 27% kind of coincides with what the vet from Australia suggested between 25 and 45%. 25 and, 45. and it's funny because I was watching the poll. If you're like me, Iggy Mom on Instagram, you don't just look at the poll once. You got you to gotta check in and see how the answers as they roll in are going. And I would say I think I, at any given time, I never saw the poll go over 40%. But it ended up at 27. Yeah. So I think as more people responded with, no, my Iggy has not broken their leg as of now. Knock on wood. Always knocking on wood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crossing all paws. Crossing all fingers. Sending out the good vibes. But it ended up being 27%. So it's interesting to see that it did fluctuate between those two numbers and ended up with just that. 73% said no. If you participated in that poll... Thank you so much. So I just want to end this conversation about leg breaks to say that it's something that we have been nervous about, but we don't live in fear. We don't get nervous to play with our dog and we still take her out and go to the dog parks and go on trails. And I think that Adelaide is maybe not the typical Iggy. We talked about this already, but she's a little bit more courageous, a little more outgoing. But I think in turn, that makes us as parents nervous for her. So I think this is a good lesson that having insurance is really important and to not live in fear, but to be informed. And if you are inspired from listening to this to look into an insurance plan, that's great. Or if you're inspired to maybe be more courageous and, you know, watch your dog diligently, but know that they can still play and they're still dogs. It's a beautiful breed and we've just been loving getting to know Adelaide as she grows up to be a real dog. Pup dates! Woo! So in the last episode we said we were going to go get Adelaide a life jacket. And what did we do? Got her a life jacket. And what color was that life jacket? Yellow! Adelaide... She just looks good in yellow. Also, yellow is good for safety. We can if, see her and spot her very easily. Exactly. If she becomes a pro swimmer and she swims all the way across the lake, like, that's my dog. Good thing she's in yellow. I can see her. <laughs> Not going to lose her for all those midnight swims we're going to take her on. Yeah. So it went really well. She... I mean, she's not a pro swimmer. Oh, no, no, no. She's not a pro <laughs> swimmer. No, this is a, a kind of a, in case of emergency Oh yeah. Thing. So we uh we tried yeah, just her, for fun. Yeah, we tried we her to with try and it. without the life jacket and, and she was able to swim and swam directly back to shore every time. I was so shocked. She really like pumps her paws and I know she picks swims like water. she runs. She swims like she runs that she's going as fast as she can. She's so strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Side note, I've seen the rehabilitations of Iggy's from leg breaks, mm. some of them practice in water, oh. that it's part of their rehabilitation. Fun, fun thing I've seen. That's a rehab and thing for people, too, that they get, they walk yeah. in the pool. So, yeah. I mean, what a great connection here. Practice her in water so that, God forbid she were to break her leg, she wouldn't be afraid of the re rehabilitation process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the only problem we had was that it was windy. She got cold. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, it's hard to say whether or not she was... By the end, she was kind of done, but she was shaking pretty bad from being too cold, I think. We did use treats yep. to try and make it a fun experience. And we went into the water with her, of course. We didn't just throw her in. So she actually first started on the shore, and Ryan was holding her, and I was in the water, and she came towards me because I had a chicken treat. And she sort of gently made her way into the water. Mm -hmm. But it was fun to see. Mm -hmm. And good to know if we want to take her in a canoe I think kayak. we're going to try that. Yeah. I think we should. I have a love-hate relationship with canoes. After I fell out of a canoe the second I tried to hop in it in eighth grade. And it was quite embarrassing. And I was accused of roughhousing or being irresponsible. When, if you know me, I'm a goody two-shoes. I uh, definitely did that accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't allowed to canoe for the rest of the day. So my first canoe experience was very upsetting, but 
I learned to kayak a little later. And just last year, we went kayaking in Florida with my aunt and uncle, which was a really great experience. So Mm -hmm. knowing that I now enjoy kayaking and maybe canoeing, we hope to take Adelaide out with us. So on our way up to Muskoka, we took a slight detour. The best kind of detour. (laughs) An Iggy-related detour. I mean, everything (laughs) we do is Iggy-related now. Especially now. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, we got to go see our breeder. So she has a bunch of dogs living with her that... uh, Nine Iggies. Nine Iggies and two Chinese Crested. Yeah. And a cat. And a cat. (laughs) Let's mix it up. Why not? So Adelaide got to play and hang out with all these dogs for an afternoon. I think we were there for over two hours by accident. Yeah, oops. <laughs> and uh, she got uh, she got to see her sister for the first time since they were together, since we brought her home. So Yeah, the one puppy that Shalane kept from Adelaide's litter was Sola. Mm-hmm. And, and Sola wanted nothing to do with her. She's over, Adelaide. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. Adelaide is... Is very outgoing. And Zola's a little on the more timid side. Yeah. But really, she really bonded with Bunny, who was also around at the same time when they were growing up together, those litters. Mm -hmm. She kind of brings the energy out of her, which we got to see as well, which was very fun. Yeah. And we, we got a picture of the two of them together, and they look so similar. They're both really small. Like we've said in the past, Adelaide came from a litter of seven. So... They're, they're mostly all pretty pretty small. It'd be fun to see the other girl that was the same size. The one that we almost called Edith. She's now named Peppa. And she's beautiful. But how fun would it be to get them all together again? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> so we're hoping on the way back to go and, and make that detour again. To go and, and hang out with the dogs. And if you want a visual for this, check out Adelaide's Instagram. Because we took lots of photos. <laughs> and we plan to take more. Always more. Uh, and the last thing that we did that was that was really fun was we got to meet up with the little deers. Yes. So Iggy Will- meetups are my favorite thing. <laughs> Willa and Aladar are the, the, the dogs of some friends of ours that uh, Mackenzie that I actually grew up with that we went to, to elementary school and, and high school together and now both have Italian greyhounds. So it's very unexpected that we both have this breed of dog. I first found out because on the breeder's website, she had photos of Mackenzie showing the dogs at the dog shows. So cool. I was like, wait a second. That's Mackenzie. I know that girl. I know her. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've met a them. A way the Iggy community is bringing people together. Yeah. So we, we met them at the, the pet show in the past. And, uh, but now we got to, to really hang out with them. Brought them to a park here. And, uh, and again, got to hang out for like two hours by accident. <laughs> and Adelaide is continuing to learn that not everybody is going to want to play mm-hmm. or yeah, be her so best friend. They were all kind of content to walk on the leashes together. That was adorable. And, and we got photos of that as well. It was great. But they, they weren't super excited to get to play with her. But she does. I mean, Adelaide loves humans. So when we bring her to meetups we find that she kind of abandons us as parents <laughs> i i like to take that as a compliment that she's independent and strong and she's courageous and can meet other people but also just looks like she's having more fun with the other iggy's parents and not us but that's okay we did get a little meetup time with willa and aladar mm-hmm. it's fun to see adelaide socializing mm-hmm. she's growing up yeah she's been really having a great time out here in nature getting yeah. to spend time outside I mean, she's a city dog, don't get us wrong. Yeah, but she she loves soaking up the sun and finding her sunspots and eating ants and finding twigs outside. and <laughs> It's been great. You know, she should come up with a recipe. Twigs, ants, leaves. Oh, my. Yeah. Mud pie. Something. <laughs> Iggy pie. <laughs> Iggy pie. <laughs> recipe coming soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Iggy Parents. You can follow us on Instagram at at the Iggy Parents. Or find us on YouTube, search for The Iggy Parents, and you'll find us. This podcast is available where all podcasts are found. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye from Ryan. And Jess. And Adelaide. The Iggy.